good evening thank you for the opportunity to organize this this is relatively a new topic and uh, uh, this actually we have started seeing them in a very large numbers on the mris of the patients who come to us with some non specific pains so it actually refers to a patchy t2 weighted hyper intensity in the bone they are usually self limiting in nature the exact etiology as on date is not known but it may be related to the transient osteoporosis of the hip or migratory osteoporosis although recent papers and the research have stated that all these patients they may not have reduced bmds usually the clinical presentation the main complaint is pain which could be acute or insidious it is somewhat like a inflammatory pattern males are affected more usually in their middle age and the ratio of male to female is 3 to 1 young women in third trimester are also seen to be affected and usually this progressive pain reaches plateau in 1 to 2 months etiopathogenesis acute traumatic etiology is the main cause of bme in common population as well as athletes although in some cases this condition may also result from a repetitive or chronic trauma the bone responds to repetitive stresses with an imbalance between the activity of the clasts and the blasts causing alteration in the bone turnover so basically bme is a syndrome which is a deficiency or which is a malfunctioning bone balance or bone homeostasis initially the bone adapts tries to adapt forming new periosteal bone and providing structural support but if this stress persists then there is a significant decrease in the clastic activity to the detriment of osteoblastic activity resulting in micro fractures so bone marrow edema on uh, could be traumatic a traumatic traumatic could be bone related or soft tissue related a traumatic could be overuse inflammatory avn so on and so forth the causes as I, as we stated bone related are stress fractures micro fractures or frank fractures soft tissue related could be rupture of the rupture or avulsion of the ligaments capsule or retinacular injuries and some could be tendon related a traumatic could be overuse hyperemia insufficiency fractures osteonecrosis inflammatory metabolic and immune deficiency as well so what happens is actually biomechanical overload of the joints and overuse it is caused by physical activity and intensive training and this could be also there even in absence of the injury which are called as a traumatic uh, bmes and that causes what is called as bone marrow lesion so there is a difference between bone marrow syndrome and a bone marrow lesion so what happens in a uh, overuse kind of an injury so overuse is a very common occurrence in sports setting especially in foot and ankle they are very very common in runners they also can have upper tibial or a medial tibial plateau uh, stress fractures these injuries affect fairly consistent areas of skeleton which are probably the wet bearing areas examples in foot and ankle could be subcondyle area of the talar dome distal tibia fibula calcaneum and these injuries sometimes also called as bone stress injuries it is also associated with actually tendinopathies different types of tendinopathies and similar findings can be seen in other parts mainly in the lower extremity so radiological classification is three types type 1 type 2 type 3 so here and as an arthroscopy surgeon or sports medicine consultant one needs to have some knowledge of reading mris as well so type 1 is diffuse retinacular type 2 is more localized and type 3 is with a frank fracture so those are certain examples this is a acute ankle sprain so here you will find extensive bone edema because of the counter coup injury or the talus sitting onto the distal end of the tibia so these are uh, type 1 type 2 is because of the ligament injuries as you see this bone marrow edema into the fibula is associated with the cyst and that is the atfl injury giving rise to uh, bone marrow edema syndrome so you need to have an eye and get yourself trained to analyze all white shadows on the mri scans in t2 weighted images type 3 is often associated with fracture or osteochondral lesion here you can see osteochondral fragment there with the tip of the fibula and atfl injury secondary to tendinopathies the typical examples are retrocalcaneal bursitis or the haglund's bump causing marrow edema in calcaneum tibial is posterior tendinopathy and peroneal tendinopathy this is a typical picture you'll find medial malleolus there tibial is posterior partial rupture and there is a bone marrow edema at that point in time in posterior ankle you will see this is the haglund's bump that's the calcaneal bone edema and you can see a fluid into the retrocalcaneal bursa so anything white on mri is one should analyze and one should see whether the bone marrow edema syndrome exists the impingements as abhishek told in his uh, talk as well 
There are a lot of impingement syndromes which will give rise to bone marrow edema into the hind foot and the calcaneum. This typical example of a bone marrow edema or a stress fracture in a, uh, in a fast bowler in cricket. So here there's a T1 image showing you a stress fracture in the pars intraarticularis. They also could be symptomatic or asymptomatic. There was a paper by Major, uh, Major NM who studied about uh, 34 uh, basketball college, college basketball players and found that 14 of them, they had some kind of bone marrow edema lesion somewhere and they were absolutely asymptomatic. So you want to see whether they are symptomatic or not. Investigation wise, the biochemical markers which reflect the bone turnover are the investigations which we need to do, out of which we have serum calcium, phosphate, vitamin D3. Uh, BAP, PTH, osteocalcin, and DPD. So out of these, the uh, BAP and osteocalcin are bone forming uh, parameters, whereas the DPD levels, they will tell you about the bone resorption. Uh, serum calcium levels could also be seen low in all those people who are taking PPIs, which causes hypochlorhydria hydria, and thus reducing the calcium absorption. So th this was the paper which stated what is the percentage of abnormalities you get in biochemical markers. Serum calcium, uh, uh, calcium 7.1% had a hypocalcemia. Vitamin D3 was starkly deficient in 58.3 patients. Uh, BAP and osteocalcin were WNL, so there was no problem with formation of a bone. The problem was with more resorption. Radiology-wise, DEXA scan, 17.5% uh, only had osteoporosis. And the alterations were similar in upper and lower extremities, although the lower extremities were affected more. So what are the treatment options? Natural history, if left untreated, spontaneous resolution in three to nine months. Conservative management, partial non-weight bearing, NSAIDs, bisphosphonates. Muller showed that zolandronic acid can be recommended for relieving pain. Can I take a minute more, sir? For relieving pain in athletes. And it reduced recovery time by about 50%. So this is one option we need to consider. Ibendronate. Uh, is also uh, uh, is also supposed to be a, uh, good in treating these BMEs. Among the monoclonal antibodies, denosumab has been proven to be the most efficient in treatment of BME. And uh, about six to twelve weeks after den uh, denosumab therapy, these bone marrow edema syndrome they disappeared by about ninety three percent. Teriparatide only useful along with CRPS. This causes anabolic effects and then uh, can be suggested as a short term use. Most important is vitamin D three. It is a key component in bone homeostasis. Hora studied about 31 subjects uh, in foot and ankle, and they found that hypovitaminosis was detected in most of them, and 19.3 was the minimum level detected. So it's an important cofactor in BME, and vitamin D should always be analyzed. Operative treatment-wise, it can be considered if the conservative treatment fails. You can have procedures like subchondroplasty, where you can inject calcium phosphate which are commercially available preparations nowadays and can also be used in bone marrow edema syndrome because of the root tears in the knee where there are insufficiency fractures in the medial condyle. So to just present you one small single case, 26 years old, endurance runner, pain right foot, no history of injury, uh, but had pain over the medial aspect of the ankle and you can see extensive bone marrow edema in the medial malleolus and the talus. He was an endurance runner, and you can also see that there is some ganglionic cyst formation of the talonavicular joint. This patient had a faulty technique of running, as you can see here, and that is why he was getting overstressed. So you can see he's a heel strike runner. Endurance runner should be usually midfoot runners. So heel strike, the foot goes into excessive uh, pronation, and that is why it is causing a lot of pressures under the medial aspect. So biochemistry, except for vitamin D3 levels, everything was normal in him. We just gave him vitamin D3 supplements and he resolved over a period of time. So to conclude, BME is a condition affecting adolescents, more predominantly in males. There is a high bone turn turnover due to vitamin D deficiency, mainly affects wet bearing joints. Hypothesized is that BME pathogenesis is a multifactorial process and there is an accelerated bone turnover. The patients diagnosed with primary bone marrow lesions should be screened carefully for vitamin D3 and hyperparathyroidism. Moreover, findings suggest that comprehensible treatment for BMEs is a therapy that compensates for elevated bone resorption. Thank you for your attention and sorry for taking a little more time.